Alright, in this example, we have a square of wire. This square of wire has side A. And I'm going to represent the resistance of this wire as such with a resistance big R there. The resistance of this wire is equal to 25.0 ohms. We know A has a value of 5.00 centimeters. And there is a magnetic field which is oriented perpendicular to the plane of our square loop which is equal to 45.0 times a cosine of 17t Teslas. Now, it's perpendicular to the plane of the loop. I'm going to illustrate it like this. But notice, because this magnetic field is actually changing as a function of time, it's either into or out of the board at any time t. It just depends. If you pick a time t, it'll be either, either be into or out of the board. But it's definitely perpendicular to this plane. What I want to know is the equation for the current as a function of time. And I'm really only concerned about the magnitude. We're not going to worry about too much about the direction. We've done enough of the direction for now. We'll come back to that in a little bit. And I also uh, will figure out, eh, we'll do this. And I want to know the frequency of the current. We start with Faraday's law. What? Maggie's Faraday's law. Faraday's law is uh, EMF equals negative N. N stands for? Uh, number of loops per turn. Yep, loops per turns, it doesn't really matter. Uh, derivative of magnetic flux over resistance flux. Great. So we have then the equation. We have only one loop, so I'll put that in right now. So we just have one here times the derivative of, as a function of time, of B A cosine theta, the magnetic flux. Uh, help me work with what's on the right here, Spencer. Um, the area would be A squared. OK, or a little a squared. Yeah. OK, I'll put that in a minute. Oh, okay, so yeah, first the negative, um, the one, just go away. The B is, well, would we keep it constant because it's perpendicular or? But notice, it is changing. It's definitely changing as a function of time. So that stays in the derivative. So we have 45 times a cosine of 17t is definitely included in there. Okay, you told me the area, do, does that change as a function of time? No. So we have A squared, and then we're only interested in the magnitude here, so what can we use for the cosine, the, the angle? That's cosine of zero. Cosine of zero. Okay, so now, this is gonna give us the EMF, but I'm interested in the current. How are we gonna figure out the current? That will okay, let's back up. Remember, I dropped the magnet through the solar, right? And that gave us current. You saw that. What I've done here is instead of just dropping a magnet, we now have a mathematical description for how that magnetic field is changing. And the question is, how then are we going to figure out the current if we can figure out the EMF on the circuit? She's not seeing it. Help her out. That's okay. Flat. I'm not sure if we did this one, though. EMF equals negative L D I D T. EMF L equals L negative L D I D T? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that be correct? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, this has to do with uh, self induction. That's chapter 32. That's okay. Not random questions. Look. You said that the potential difference equals the current times of the resistance to the resistance. We have a circuit here. This is the induced EMF. It's basically just like having a battery on the circuit. We could say that the electric potential difference equals the current times the resistance. We now have an equation for the EMF. Okay. 
the EMF, which is the electric potential difference. In other words, the current is just going to be equal to the electric potential difference or the EMF divided by the resistance. So we can finish this. Uh, the EMF is equal to negative A squared derivative as a, as a function of time. Take the derivative, please, as a function of time of 45 cosine 17 t. Uh, Sierra. <coughs> okay, well, we're going to uh, take the derivative of the inside okay. 17t, which is 17, and you multiply that, you put in the 45 again, and then it should be negative sine of what? 17t. Of 17t. Great. Uh, let's see. EMF, uh, we have a bunch of numbers. Why don't we plug in another number just because we have so many. Eh, no, let's not do it. What's 17 times 45, please? 765. 765a squared. We have two negatives, so it makes it positive, times the sine of 17t. And we can now plug that back into this equation, get the current as a function of time. It's going to be equal to 1 over r times what we just got for the EMF, which is 765a squared times the sine of 17t. So the current as a function of time, let's plug in numbers, 1 over, what was it, 25, yep, times 765 times the area, which was 0 0.05 meters squared times the sine of 17t. The current as a function of time. In other words, the current as a function of time is equal to 76.5 sine of 17 t in milliamps. Good. We figured out the magnitude of the current. Now I've asked for the frequency of the current. This is where you should be able to look at what we've got on the board and recognize something we did before. Um, and you should be able to identify something from that equation that we just got for the current. It has to do with simple harmonic motion. <laughs> Tim. It, it has the, we've, if you look at it, it has the same shape, true. So there is something we can pull out of this equation. First off, we should be able to identify that the amplitude of this is 76.5 milliamps, right? That's the amplitude of this current. That's its maximum value. It's going to oscillate back and forth between that positive and negative back. Gary? Was it like angular velocity or something like that? Angular, not angular velocity. It was the symbol for angular velocity, but we didn't call this angular velocity in this particular case. It was called angular, angular frequency. In this case, the angular frequency is 17. Okay, equation for angular frequency. The equation for angular velocity, as you recall, is change in theta over change in time. Well, if the change in theta is 2 pi radians, the change in time class is? the period, capital T. And we know 1 over the period is equal to the frequency. In other words, it's equal to 2 pi times the frequency. The angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. So we can figure out the frequency. It's equal to the, two, uh, the angular frequency divided by 2 pi. Or in this case, 17 divided by 2 pi. The frequency of this oscillation is. Two point seven zero six, or with sig figs, two point seven one, two point seven one dimensions back. Uh, 
ingredients. Frequency travels in hertz. Hertz. Now, cycles per second. So this particular circuit is going to go through 2.71 cycles per second. 